I think a conversation about hell should begin with understanding how many invitations, how many invitations God has issued to keep us out of hell. Every rainbow, every slap of a wave against a beach, every bird, every ministry, every conversation with the, every time we've held a baby, anytime we've done anything beautiful, God is saying, this is how much I love you. Hmm. This is how much I love you. And, and then when we look at the life of Jesus, the only picture of God ever taken, Jesus Christ, and the fact that he positioned himself on the cross as if to say, if you want to go through hell, you got to get through me. This is how much I love you. And how he died, how he who knew no sin became sin for us. So I think if we're going to really talk about hell, we start by talking about God's love and everything he's done to keep us from there. But then we also acknowledge the fact that God is a just God. And nobody in heaven is going to look up and say, boy, I didn't want to be here. (laughs) Nobody in heaven. Uh, uh, C.S. Lewis famously stated that the doors to hell are locked from the inside. The doors to hell are locked from the inside because there are people who spend a lifetime saying, God, leave me alone. Leave me alone. I don't want to hear what you have to say. I don't care about what you say about money, about love, about sexuality, about purity. I don't care. I don't care. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. And a just God ultimately honors that request. So spend your life telling God to leave you alone, and he will do just that. It's a terrible thing. Anybody who has ever preached a sermon on hell and done so gleefully or glibly has not studied hell deeply because it is it is it is the greatest tragedy ever. But I believe that God is doing right now, even right now, through an old drunk like me, converted drunk like me. He he is trying to get people say, don't go there. Don't go there. But he is just. He is just. And a just God must honor our requests. Mm. 